Okay, we're picking up with the uh, supplemental review for test number four, question number five, and it asks us to solve for x in the equation 11 raised to the 4x minus 7 equals 2 to the 5 minus 3x. And then it says round your answer to four decimal places. One of the challenges with this problem is that you don't have the same base on each side. On the left, you have a base of 11, and on the right, you have a base of 2. If we had the same base, like a 3 and a 3, then we'd actually be able to set the exponents equal to one another, and it's a basic algebra problem. This was going to require a little bit more work, um, so here's what we need to do. Um, first off, we need to do the log base 11 of each side so that I can at least eliminate one of the bases. Okay, so I've taken log base 11 of each side. And again, the benefit of doing that is that log base 11 with a base of 11, they will divide out or cancel off so that I have 4x minus 7 equals log base 11 of 2 raised to the 5 minus 3x power. Then I'm actually going to use the power rule so that I'm going to bring this exponent down to the front so that I have 4x minus 7 equals 5 minus 3x times log base 11 of 2. Now at that point I probably could go ahead and get the value for log base 11 of 2. And to do that, we'd have to use the change of base. Okay? So using the change of base, I would have log of 2 divided by log 11. And if I round that on my calculator, let's see what we get. So I would do log 2 close divide log 11, close the parentheses, and enter, we get 0 0.28906. So I'm going to round that to 0.2891, and then I can distribute that and work the problem. Then it becomes a basic algebra problem. Okay, so... If I do the distributing, I'm going to have 4x minus 7 equals 0.2891 times 5 is 1.4455 minus 3 times 0.2891 is 0.8673x. Then I notice that I have x's on both sides of the equal bar and I have constants on both sides of the equal bar. So I'm going to get those together. So I'm going to add 0.8673x, add 0.8673x. So I have 4 0.8673x minus 7 equals 1.4455. Then I'm going to move the constant to the other side. So I'm going to add 7, add 7. Okay, when I do that, I have... 4.8673x equals 8.4455. Then to finish out solving for x, I need to divide both sides by the 4.8673. So I have x equals... When we do that division, we get 
five, two. You are asked to take it to four decimal places, so make sure that you do that. Okay. All right. Question number six. We're getting into some word problems here. So it says Gordon invested fifty-five thousand dollars into a CD compounded quarterly with an annual interest rate of 5.90%. Determine how much money Gordon would have after 10 years. Round your answer to the nearest cent. And all the instructions on the test say provide only a numerical answer, which means when you do your answer, they do not want you to put the dollar sign. They want just the number. Please be sure to follow the instructions, otherwise you'll get it counted wrong, okay? This was pretty much a straightforward interest problem, so we're going to use the uh, compounding interest formula. A equals P times 1 plus R divided by N raised to the NT power. I'm going to start out by kind of identifying all the pieces that I have. I could have, I should have four of the five variables. It tells us that he invested initially $55,000, so that's my P, into a CD compounded quarterly. Quarterly means every three months, which is four times per year, with an annual interest rate of 5.90%. Now remember, you need to convert that percent to a decimal. So we take 5.90 and divide it by 100, which is 0 0.0590 to get it into decimal form. And then we want to know how much money he's going to have after 10 years. So am I really looking for A here? And guys, it becomes honestly a straight, flat out substitution problem. We're going to plug the numbers into the formula. Okay, so when I do that, I have A equals 55,000 times 1 plus 0 0.0590 divided by 4 raised to the 4 times 10 power. So I have 55,000, and I'm going to get my calculator out, okay, and I'm going to do baby steps. Okay, I want to do the division inside the parentheses. So 0 0.0590 divided by 4. Then I add 1 to get the value inside the parentheses. Which is going to give me 1.01475. Okay, so inside the parentheses, I have 1.01475, and I'm going to raise that to the 40th power. Okay, so that answer raised to the 40th power gives me 1.79623. I'm going to multiply that times the 55,000 that I started with. And I end up with $98,792.75. So we have $98,792.75. Now again, as you enter that into the system for the test, do not put the dollar sign. Just put the number value or the numeric value. 